from the pink bike downhill field bike test review whistler oh my god pink bike downhill field field test there are a ton of other downhill bikes that use complicated suspension systems but there's no mistaking an orange when you see one that single pivot silhouette has been the same since basically Britain formed as an island. Their aluminum frames are hand welded in their Halifax facility, and this one is the 279 downhill bike. It's an evolution of the 222, and that started decades ago with the likes of the Orange Global Racing Team, furthered by Steve Peat and his World Cup dominance. In true British style, there's no faffing about with this bike. All of the cable routing is external, and there's plenty of mud shedding capabilities. Their complete build kit comes with a Fox Float X2 air shock, which will help add some ramp up to the end of the 198 mils of travel. Let's dive into the spec and pricing a little bit further. Matching the rear shock is a Fox 40 fork up front, and there are also a couple other British made components here. We've got an aluminum bar and stem from Berg Tech Components, and also Hope's Pro 4 hubs on Stan Flow EX rims. We've got Formula's Cura 4 four piston brakes to slow down the 279. Now a handmade frame is never gonna be cheap. This complete bike comes in at $8,800 US. Now if you're after just the frame, you'd be talking about 3850 and that would include the Fox Float X2 rear shock. We chose a size medium, which has a 460 mil reach. The other thing about the 279 is that it has a high stack at about 641. So I ended up sliding the crowns down on the stanchions until they just about touched the handlebars. That kind of left for a more upright standing position as opposed to a stretched out feeling. Once I got the controls all set up to my liking, I put the Fox 40 to the same settings I'm used to. And then I went to the shock for a ballpark 28% sag. Now in the parking lot, this all felt pretty good, but as we'll discuss on the ride details, there were a couple changes that I needed to make to get that rear shock in the sweet spot. Whistler was in its roughest conditions and that required a little bit more tinkering with the rear shock. I ended up going up in pressure to get a little bit more support through the middle of the travel, even though there was plenty of bottom out support from that air shock as it ramped up. I added a little bit more pressure up to about 200 PSI and that made for a little bit more of a jarring off the top feel than expected. Overall, the balance of the bike seemed to be a little bit better. Now those large box section aluminum tubes actually send a lot of feedback and reverberation through the frame, especially in those rough, fast bike park conditions. I'd really like to play with an EXT coil shock with its hydraulic bottom out on this bike. I think the coil could offer a little bit more suppleness off the top, but there was a certain characteristic that I did like about the single pivot in that it always performed the same way. There was no unexpected surprises and the overall stance of the bike was very aggressive. It's not a bike that comes off the ground particularly easy, but if you want to mob straight over something through rough stuff, it is very, very capable. But what about cornering this thing? It's ultra long, right? Especially with that trailing 465 mil chainstay. Even with that small rear wheel, it's a little bit of an effort to negotiate very twisty tight turns. It almost feels like you've got a trailer towing behind you. That also makes the bike a little bit more of a chore to pick up off the ground, especially at lower speeds where you might need to hop over obstacles. When you do get into a fast section of trail though, it really does let you haul. You can open up the brakes and really let this thing point and shoot. That also makes it easy to find traction and feel when the wheels are about to slide out. I think there is a little bit of a middle ground where this is the most extreme bike and something like the Nuke Proof, which is very nimble and agile for a downhill bike, somewhere in between there could be the perfect blend. So those are my thoughts on the suspension characteristics and frame feedback. But what about the other components on the bike? The brakes had a very interesting feel. The lever is quite long with the pivot close to the handlebar, similar to a SRAM feeling compared to a Shimano but there was quite a bit more force required to pull. And these particular brakes were equipped with organic pads, which did have a decent amount of bite, but I'd like something a little bit crisper just to slow down the bike immediately. It's kind of funny how you don't need the most expensive drivetrain on a downhill bike either. The GX components in terms of the derailleur and shifter operated just fine. 
and it was nice to see a full chain guide on there from MRP. The first thing has to be the overall stance of the bike, just how stretched out the geometry is, and it's both a pro and a con. It's a lot of bike to wield, but the overall package is fairly light. Now, I think it could use a little bit more forgiveness in terms of the frame. I'm super glad that it came with aluminum wheels because I think carbon would have just been totally overbearing on this package. For such a simplistic bike and the beauty of external cable routing, there is a portion that does go through the chainstay. Now that takes away the ease of changing a brake line. The other issue is that it could use a couple more cable clamps towards the head tube. I had to rig up some zip ties looped through the fork bumpers to quiet down those cables and keep the rattling down. The frame itself is not the quietest and a little bit more protection on the chainstay to keep that chain from bouncing against it would definitely quiet things down even further. All in all, the Orange 279 is a very unique bike in terms of geometry and suspension design. There's still a simple beauty about the single pivot and with some more time, I think tuning a coil shock to suit this bike would really play to its strengths. Like the Antidote, it's not the most forgiving ride. You definitely have to be a strong rider to make the most out of this, both in terms of holding on through the chatter and dealing with the length of the bike. But if you love going fast and have the strength to hold on through rough braking bumps, there's a simple beauty about the single pivot. There you have it. That's our conclusion on the Orange 279. Be sure to check out all the other reviews and videos to come from the Pink Bike Downhill Field Test. Thank you.